of feet above sea level is the highest point. So if you dig, manage to dig down, all you're going to get is salt water. And really, the only chance of getting fresh water is where rain's collected in the hollows of the trees. And like the, in a leaf like that, that's going to be rainwater. Yeah. There's not nearly enough here to keep you alive for long. In this climate, you need around 10 litres a day. Dehydration is now one of your biggest enemies. And with as little as 2.5% less water in your body, you become a quarter as efficient. That makes your job of surviving much harder. The odds against you are now stacking up. This island just isn't the larder I was hoping for. But nowhere to look, and you can find food. Look, they've seen me coming. They've all disappeared into their shells. Go watch. Disappear and roll back down the hill. And the shells they're in, they're not actually their own shells. They're whelk shells. And what they do is take it over. And then when they grow bigger, they'll abandon their house and they'll find a new shell. But these, you can eat. Here you go, I've got this one before he's gone back in his shell. And all of this, ow, ow, get off. All of that, the guts. And then he's got this one big claw here. And that's what I want. They're much easier to get when they're out of their shell, but you've got to be quite quick to get them before they retreat. You just have to get over that worry of being bitten by them. Okay, I've got enough of them here. Be able to barbecue them up. Nice crab. I don't want to eat them raw. They're full of harmful bacteria. Food poisoning is the last thing you need out here. It's like signing your own death warrant. I'm going to forage for more supper, and I need something to help me. There's a certain amount of food on the island, but really, the real bounty is to be found out there in the sea. And we find a shop, and at the end of this, this will act as a really good spear. I'm going to free dive and then see what I can find on the seabed. The coral surrounding the island should harbour plenty of food, and I'm after something that I can get easily. Sea cucumbers are some of the simplest life forms in the sea. They sift plankton and waste on the seabed with up to 30 tube-like feet around their mouths. Just like the earthworm, they're the complete recycling machine. It's like a giant sack of black sausage. But they're one of the most protein-rich foods in the world and perfect for survival. Black, salty, rubbery, pretty ruddy, disgusting. Now I'm going to get back into the sea and try and find something more substantial. I've got to go deeper but I need to train my body first. The more practice dives I make, the longer I'm able to stay under. And soon I can manage almost two minutes. But if I ignore my body, I could black out and drown. Hard work. Just 
three diagonals. It's just about slowly stretching the limit that your lungs can work out. It's a lot of it, it's just about slowing things down. Take a good few breaths, fill your blood with oxygen, and that will let you stay down there for longer. You've got to be careful not to hyperventilate though. Do too much of it and you go hypoxic. Hypoxia is a stealthy killer. In the US alone, 4,000 victims drown every year. Your expanding air starved lungs raid your bloodstream for oxygen. Before you know it, you're unconscious and you die without any idea of your impending death. We're getting an now. Now I'm ready to hunt. And there's a fish I spotted on the bottom, buried in the sand. It's a stingray. But these have been known to kill. The venom in its barb is laden with enzymes, which destroy body tissue. If I go for this, I need to get it right first time. I'm looking for the telltale mound in the sand, which will give it away. I'm hunting for food on the ocean floor on a tiny Indonesian island off the Sumatran coast. I'm using all my survival skills to show you how to make it out alive. I'm diving for stingray. This lethal reef predator has powerful jaws but its real weapon is in its tail. Get too close to one, and these have been known to kill. I'm looking for the telltale mound in the sand, which will give it away. My lungs are now bursting but I'm determined to get in. There's a stingray. Oh. Look at this. Beautiful. But these can be deadly. And the dangerous bit of it is this the tail? That's good to eat. My challenge now is a fading light. Back on shore, I've got to get a shelter made before nightfall. On the equator, it gets dark like the flick of a switch. So I need plenty of time to find just the right spot to make camp. Yeah, this very tip end of the island is probably going to be my best place for a shelter. Yeah, I've got a really good view here out to sea, so I can see any shipping that might be coming past. I've got a nice sea breeze that's going to keep the sand flies away. I've also got this tree, going to give me good shade from the sun. I've got loads of driftwood and firewood as well. Let's see what we can get. My chances of signalling to a ship are slim. These aren't exactly the busiest shipping lanes in the world, but there are fishing boats out there which might spot you. Build your shelter off the ground, well away from sand flies. They can carry leishmaniasis. Sores, fever and diarrhea are just what you don't need. This driftwood is perfect for a shelter. A bit of wood in 